Hey, hey, Uncle Steph here. So, lesson number two, something I've learned over the last 30 years of being a professional developer. Lesson number two is keep your code simple. If you're losing your hair, like uh, Uncle Steph here, my advice to you is to shave or buzz cut. Looks pretty cool. Lesson number two I've learned in software development over the decades is that you want to keep your code as simple as possible. The best developers have the simplest code. If you have very complex code, it's a mess. The biggest problem with software is keeping it up to date. So when you, at, at inception, when the code base is first written, if the code is very complex, trust me, in six months, you're going to forget what you wrote, let alone some other party coming in. So what can you do to optimize your code so that it's uh, simple from the get-go? So once you get, let's say, a particular method working, what I would do next is look at that code and see how I can simplify it. Remember, code has to be written once, right? And it's used many times by other people. So if you're writing some core baseline objects, for example, for your, uh, for your system, Remember that um, other people are going to have to rely on that code, so the code should be very understandable. So you write that first set of code, you write that code the first time, rather. Look at it, once you got it working, look at it and say, okay, can I simplify this? Can I simplify this? So one thing to look for, and this is part of a process called refactoring. You can find books on it, links below. Uh, refactoring is... Getting skilled at refactoring, which is a skill set within software development. Getting skilled at refactoring is one of the first ways that you can level up your game from beginner, intermediate to advanced developer. So first thing I do when I have a piece of code that's working, I look at how can I simplify it. One of the things you can do is remove too many conditionals, right? If you have a method, a function, that has more than two conditional statements to get to an answer, you have a problem. You have to break that up into different methods. That's a first level refactoring. So you have, I don't know, you have, you have a method, you call the method, you input a variable in the, one of the arguments or two of the arguments, whatever it is, and you have if this, do that, if that, do this. If it goes beyond two ifs, you got a problem. Simplify. Break that into two different methods and pass the methods into each other, that's a much simpler implementation. Another th simple thing you can do is just make sure that you have good naming conventions. Make sure that the naming of your methods and your variables and so forth are very simple and self-explanatory. This has to do with self-describing code. Code should be self-describing. The best code is code that's very obvious at a glance what is going on. If somebody using or looking at your code base has to try to figure out what this, this method is doing, what this class is doing, you have a problem with your naming conventions. No question about that. So self-describing code. For example, if you have a class that uh, handles emails, it should be class emails, right? Not class communications patterns. You know, it should be class emails. If you have a function that validates email addresses, you should call the function validate email, not function check communications methods, you know, or something, you know, something weird like that. It may sound weird, but trust me, I have seen too many code bases where in the heat of the moment, developers will use unusual naming conventions that may make sense at that moment, may make sense if you're deep into the code base, but doesn't make any sense to somebody coming to it six months later or a year later. So naming conventions on your methods, your variables, your classes, etc., should be self-explanatory. The best code requires no comments. So let's get into comments. Yeah, comments are important, uh, but they should be minimal. If you have to write tons and tons of comments, that's a good indicator that the code base is a little bit too complex, naming conventions are not uh, useful. So you may have to look into that. Now, I will leave comments 
for circumstances where I've made architectural decisions that are not clear. Sometimes you're writing a piece of code or you're writing a class or something. You're writing a module and you, ha you can go this way or you can go that way. But because of what's going on downstream from that, you may decide instead of going route A, I'm going to go route B instead. It just makes more sense. And it could be a very subtle reason why you chose one method over another. So that's a, good in the, that's a good time when you want to leave a comment. You may say, we are using this instead of that because of these reasons here. One, two, three. That's a good use of a comment. Not, this is a class to validate email. That is not a good use of a comment. It should be very clear. Class email validations, for example. I'm using simple examples just to give you an idea. So yeah, lesson number two, based on 30 years of development experience, is to keep uh, your code simple. Strive for simplicity. The best developers have very, very simple code bases. Easy to understand code bases, because code bases are updated if the projects are successful. So my latest one, latest. I started building a prototype about 14, 15 years ago, more like 15 years ago, Studio Web, my educational platform. And it has been updated tremendously over many, many, many times, different developers, different lead developers over the years. That's an example of, of a successful code base, right? It's still in business you know, a decade and a half later. So simplicity is key. Simplicity is key. So what happens what do I do to developers who write overly complex code? When I do code reviews on rare occasion, because I, I hire somebody, I look at their coding, I ask them a, good, so a few good questions, I know who they are, I have them write some code, I do a code ex inspection, and once they pass that code inspection, then I just leave them be developers, right? I assume that they're gonna be consistent. That said, once in a while, I will do checks. I will do checks on people. And if I see God methods, basically a method that has many, many if statements, nested ifs, three levels deep, that's punishable. That is a punishable offense. Typically, if I see a God method, I will uh, have them write Ruby code for at least two weeks. If I see God methods and crappy naming conventions, then I'm giving them one month of solid Ruby programming, 100%. And if they go beyond that, then we're talking Ruby on Rails. Yes, that's the ultimate punishment, Ruby on Rails. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. I've been a software developer since 1994. That's when I first got paid to write commercial code. And on this channel, I train people in, uh, in everything I've learned over the last 30 years. So you have any questions? about what I've talked about in this particular lesson, let me know in the comments below. If you do disagree with anything I've discussed in this video, you know what to do. Blast me. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching.